10th race on Saturday was the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup turf, a mile and a half over what was officially listed as good going, but you have to consider it a little bit worse than that, and that's being kind considering the amount of rain that fell, uh, the condition of the turf course on Friday, and even the condition of the turf course on Saturday. We had seen earlier races produce some very, very slow times. This race, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't a, a painfully slow time, but I think that's mainly a product of the top two fillies. You can take a look at the field. 13 of them were signed on. All eyes were on and able. The super filly, arguably the best horse in the world. She would put it right there with a horse like Winx. Um, she was going for the elusive double, the ARC Breeders' Cup turf double. It had not been successfully completed to date um, in the same year, I should say. All eyes were on her, but Aiden O'Brien was coming with some pretty live chances as well. Most notably, Magical, a three-year-old filly taking on her elders, getting a little bit of a weight allowance. Not sure many people thought it would be this close if she was going to get the job done, but in fact it was the stretch run of this year's Breeders' Cup turf. Side run, and they're into the stretch, and the two fillies are one, two, magical and enable, and they kick on from Sattler's Joy. It's enable on the outside, in the center of the turf course. She has taken the lead, and she's pulling away from magical, who continues to battle her, though. It's these two, one, two, down to the finish. Enable and magical, and they're well clear of the others. Racing royalty, enable and Frankie Dottori. The arc winner is the Breeders' Cup turf winner, too. And Abel gets the job done. She is the first horse in history to win the Arc de Triomphe as well as the Breeders' Cup turf in the same year. She wins at odds of four to five. Magical runs runs her eyes out. Giant, giant effort from her to run second at odds of ten to one beneath Ryan Moore. Sadler's Joy, one of the American horses, runs third at odds of thirty-seven to one, and Arclo runs fourth at odds of fifty-three to one. Let's discuss Enable a little bit. The Super Philly. She is four years old. She has won ten of eleven starts lifetime. Only one loss to date, and she finished third that day. She is over $10 million in career earnings, $10.7 million to be exact. Owned by Judmont Farms Limited, trained by John Gosden, bred by Judmont Farms Limited in Great Britain. Ridden to victory by Frankie DeTori. You can see the pedigree at the bottom of the horse card. She's by Nathaniel out of a Sadler's Wells mare named Concentric. Uh, from a speed figure standpoint, this was an exceptional effort from both of the Phillies. 133 time form US ratings, pace adjusted for each of them. Enable earns a 114 buyer speed figure and a 113 for Magical. When you look and see a horse like Sadler's Joy, we know Sadler's Joy here in the United States. His MO is a big, big late finish. Now, he may not love ground with some cut, and again, it's, it was officially listed as good. I think it was still probably slightly closer to yielding, but that's just my opinion. Uh, I didn't get out there on the turf course. I know on Friday there were a number of folks saying that that turf was proper yielding, if not soft, and instead it was still officially listed as good, which is very, very unfair to the players because that, that's not an accurate assessment of what you're dealing with. There are ways to do it in a much more much more legitimate sort of fashion to, to gauge how soft any given turf course is. Um, another story for another day. Uh, the fact that Sadler's Joy got his final quarter mile in 26.52 over testing ground, not a bad time in the grand scheme of things. Compare that to the top two, who, by the way, were nine lengths clear of Sadler's Joy. Magical comes home in 25.23, which, again, given the circumstances, is an enormous late finish, and Abel came home in 25.08. Truly a special filly. Really, really impressive. Uh, at seeing her in the flesh, look, I'm not sure there's anything else that you can say about her uh, that hasn't already been said. She She's borderline an all-timer. I don't even want to say borderline. She is an all-timer. She's a dual arc winner. She's a Breeders' Cup turf winner. Uh, she's beaten boys on a number of occasions. She's trained by John Gosden. Frankie rides her. I mean, the, the, Judmont, you have really all the, all the pieces to a giant storyline here. Um... Perhaps a bigger storyline exiting this race is that it's not 100% that she's done. Uh, Prince Khaled Abdullah is the, the head of Judmont, and uh, Lord Teddy Grimthorpe is the racing manager. They were uh, they wanted to just say, we're going to enjoy it for a little bit, and we'll do right by the filly. If she's able to go on, they'll go on, and if she's not, they won't. 
but it's not 100% that she's done racing, which would be a thrill if she came back as a five-year-old. As far as Magical is concerned, she is going to come back for Aiden O'Brien, go on to a four-year-old campaign, which, look, if Enable doesn't come back, and even if she does, I think this race at least suggests that Magical is ready to take that next step. And again, if you think there's that logical sort of maturation in the progression from three to four, uh, Magical could certainly be a, a, a fair competitor for Enable going forward if Enable comes back as a five-year-old. And if she doesn't, Magical, all of a sudden, would probably go right to the top of the list worldwide as far as turf horses are concerned, again, with the exception perhaps of Winx. Uh, as far as the third and fourth place finishers here are concerned, Sadler's Joy, he is going to come back. They're going to run him again. And, uh, you know, there's a part of me that doesn't believe he is quite as good as he once was, but that doesn't mean that he still can't be effective. Uh, it sounds like he'll head on down to South Florida and they'll go on from there for Tom Albertrani. And Arklow, the fourth place finisher, Brad Cox, has made mention that there's a scenario where they run in the turf portion of the Pegasus World Cup down at Gulfstream in January. So the top four, there's a little bit of heads up with those horses. As far as the rest of the field is concerned, Waldgeist, you'd heard some rumblings that he wasn't loving life when he got over here. Not a great effort from him. Only a 90 buyer and a 118 time form US rating. He's better than that, I would imagine. If he goes on, he'll do better over in Europe. Talismanic probably wants firmer going. Uh, not a terrible effort from him, but certainly not what we saw last year out of Del Mar over that firm, firm going when he won the Breeders' Cup turf. Robert Bruce, I think it's plain and simple. Uh, I don't think he wants any sort of real cut in the ground. I think he is a firm turf specialist. And to be fair, I, I do think, personally, I think this distance is a little bit far for him. I think he's better at the mile and a quarter, mile and an eighth type races. Hunting Horn, he was basically in there trying to run interference with Enable. He had hemmed her in for the longest time. Uh, some team tactics. Notice no one's really making too much stink about that, but go all the way back to the Belmont Stakes when Baffert used Restoring Hope is basically... You know, look, I, I gave him a chance as just a, a flyer in that spot, but Baffert used Restoring Hope to ensure that there was pace and to, you know, sort of make sure that there was a little bit of, call it what you will, team tactics. People were losing their minds about that. I thought it was fair game. Justify was the best horse anyway, so what difference does it make? Uh, in this spot here, you know what? They tried. They tried, O'Brien's group, but it, it just, Enable was just the best horse. Um I don't have any problem with that. High happy, showed some speed, faded. Don't think he's in the form that he once was. Not also sold about the give in the ground for him. Uh, a couple other horses. Really disappointing effort from Channel Maker and Glorious Empire. Those are the two horses coming out of those Saratoga races. And then Channel Maker came back and ran a giant race at Belmont Park over testing ground. And he was done early. Done early. I liked him. Maybe it was just me. Maybe there was too much weight on his back. Um, Terrible effort from him. Terrible effort from Glorious Empire. You just hope that they're okay. And Liam the Charmer, truth be told, he's not of this caliber. And when you give him some turf that he's just totally unfamiliar with, uh, I don't think that was ever going to work for him. This was a phenomenal show. I would argue the performances of the entire festival, whatever you'd like to call it, the little boutique meet, the Breeders' Cup, um, with the exception maybe of the two-year-old, who we'll talk about on Friday, um, Enable and Magical put on a show, and it was phenomenal. Uh, the two Phillies, they go out there, they strut their stuff. Enable gets the job done. She is the first horse in the same calendar year to win the Arc de Triomphe as well as the Breeders' Cup turf. She earns a 114 buyer speed figure and a 133 time form U.S. rating. We will find out. Nothing confirmed, but the door has been slightly left ajar. Perhaps we get to see her as a five-year-old. If we don't, she's going to go down as one of the best of all time, I would imagine that there's a real case where you can make that statement, where maybe she is one of the one of the all-time greats as far as turf is concerned. Certainly one of the all one of the the more recent greats anyway, over the past five to ten years. Enable a true superstar. She gets the job done in the turf.